Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again. I guess this is my first rational perspective of the season on Chelsea's pre-season friendly win over Arsenal at the Emirates Stadium today. It's the first of two games in the Mind series. Uh, of course, we're playing Spurs on a Wednesday evening at Stamford Bridge. Going to be at that game. The first time I've been back to the bridge um, since I think Feb 2020. So very excited for that. But this game in particular... Um, I was impressed by a bit like the Bournemouth game that I didn't review on the channel because I was on holiday. Um, the levels, I think, of fitness and sharpness and intensity within periods of the game for Chelsea. Um, coming up against Arsenal, they've had at least, I think, two more friendlies than us so far this season. It has kind of been a concern of mine that Chelsea do not have enough preseason games. Um, I think we have about four, if you count the Peterborough one that we didn't get to see any of a few weeks back. Um, so in, in that sense, and, and when looking at sort of Arsenal's team that they especially lined up with and played a majority of the game for, um, that's close to their starting eleven. So I expected that Arsenal would maybe be a little bit more in front of us in terms of their uh, preparation. Um, we didn't really, there were still some players, of course, missing, uh, who were still yet to come back from the Euro. Some big players for us like Jorginho, Reese, James, Ben Chirwell, Mason, Mount. Um, but it was great to see the likes of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner and Antonio Rudiger, Mateo Kovacic back. So I think there were some real good positives. Um, I think for some players who are kind of on the edge, potentially with their futures, this year whether they stay with the squad I'm looking at certain young players that I'll get into that I think the those in particular Dujon Sterling and Trevor Chalabar have really impressed me over the previous two games and I would like to see at least one of them stay with the squad this season because I think they they have impressed and they've looked very much up for it and I think have looked very comfortable playing with uh, fellow first teamers so let's hope they can stay with the squad this season of course, Tuchel sticking with the 3-4-3 that he has so far this season. It feels more and more like this is at least going to be the way we're going to start the season. And Tuchel is committing to the formation that won him the Champions League. Of course, it is still a preseason friendly. And we did see kind of a weird start to the game where you had Christian Pulisic and Callum Hudson-Odoi playing as wingbacks. I thought that Callum was going to be playing on the right as a wingback, as he did against Bournemouth and as he did a lot in the, in the second half of, of last season. But he was actually on the left today, which excited me and we got to see some of the best of Callum hudson because he was on that left. Uh, even though it was wing back rather than left wing, I was really intrigued to see that and I think Callum delivered. Christian Pulisic on the right, cover and Loftus cheek as the double six but I mean it wasn't really a double six in the way we've seen it under Tuchel because neither of these players are defensive midfielders so it did I think contribute a lot to the FIFA style of game today where it was end to end Chelsea didn't have a lot of balance in midfield but I think for both of those players in particular Ruben very important for them to get substantial minutes uh, before the season uh, the back three Rudiger Chalabar in the middle of the back three once again as he has been doing so far this preseason. Zuma with his uh, future uncertain, obviously, with Jules Kunde being uh, linked to Chelsea strongly at the moment. Edward Mendy in goal. And then we had Timo Werner, Kai Havertz and Hakim Ziyech as the front three. Um, Kai was kind of playing on the right a little bit behind. He wasn't really the false nine today. Um, so I just want to break it down because I think there's so many players to get through and it's going to kind of be a mess because obviously it's not a usual game. So many players involved today and some of them only had about like 20 to 30 minutes in the game. But I think there were some uh, players that I do want to pick out and, and impress me. I think in the first half, Callum hudson continues I think so far he's been the most impressive player of preseason not only in terms of what I've seen in the only the two games we got to see against Bournemouth and Arsenal but also just generally what we've been hearing for, about Callum in this preseason he really feels like a confident player he feels like a player that has maybe got the injury issues mentally behind him now and he feels a lot more I think decisive on the pitch and just that direct running, fearless running. Um, the moment at the end of the first half where he could have scored a second goal for Chelsea, I think uh, Pablo Mari was absolutely left for dead. You know, it was he kind of just destroyed Pablo Mari and uh, holding two. I remember Callum in a preseason game against Arsenal where Hector Bellerin really struggled against him a few years back um, when Callum burst onto the scene in, in the Chelsea first team under Maurizio Sarri. And it was very much like that for Callum today. Despite still being a wing back, you got to see as that half progressed. And I think Chelsea 
obviously got a lot more confident on the ball and kind of dominated the game in, in the latter stages of the first half. I think Callum grew into the game. Ruben, you know how much of a, a fan I am of Ruben. Yes, he gave the ball away a few times um, in dangerous positions, but once again, not really his natural position. And also, I just don't think the, the balance of the midfield was right for him to sort of excel. I think if you had an N'Golo or Jorginho behind him, I would like to see that as a midfield too with Ruben in it. But I think the way he was gliding and driving through the pitch, that's what we want to see from Ruben. And um, very intrigued to see what happens with him, um, given the midfield situation at the moment. If we are going to sign someone, then I think the chances of him staying probably decrease a lot. But at the moment, there is an opportunity there while he's, while he's still playing. Timo Werner and Kai Havertz obviously returning from uh, German international duty. Um, we saw, of course, Kai Havertz brilliant finish today and Kai very much uh, picking up very left off, not only in Porto, but also against England at the Euros, where I thought he was Germany's best player in that game. Um, simply wonderful. And the finish, the first touch and as well, the finish was just absolutely sublime. And at the moment, I mean, I'm putting a lot of money on Kai being the number nine or at least one of the main attackers, because unless we sign a new striker, Kai is going to be a massive player. He, whether we do or not, he's going to be a massive player. And you saw the confidence in him once again and it's why there's so much excitement that maybe all that tension and uncertainty and just adapting to a new country in a new league is behind him now that Champions League goal is going to give him so much confidence now and um, that finish was simply sublime it was and it was great to see from Werner playing it through to him because he messed up a similar chance a few minutes earlier so it was great for him to get that assist as well he was making runs in behind Arsenal Arsenal were playing a suicidal high line against uh, Kai and Timo and in particular I want to give praise to Ziyech who I think um, played more I think than Werner and Kai only got about 45 minutes same with Rudiger and Kova um, but Hakim Ziyech today overall his performance was really really good he was dropping into those central positions which is where he needs to be he needs to be deeper where he can really find those passes in behind for the likes of Werner and Kai to capitalize on if you remember the Atletico Madrid Champions League's second leg I think of the last 16 we saw these three link up really well and hopefully we'll see a lot more of it this season I think that's where Ziyech is going to thrive he needs to be in deeper central positions more as a number eight than as a sort of a winger or a touchline hugging winger that's not who he is as a player um, so if he can find that confidence and he can find a place in Tuchel's team where it can get the best out of him that passing that creativity being the creative hub I think he's got a good chance to get substantial minutes this year also avoiding injury which he got last season a few times and I felt his pressing when in the ball up high was, was quite impressive got a, a lot of energy in him and of course he didn't wasn't at the Euros you know he, he was start, he started off preseason like everyone else and has had a few weeks to get going um, so he looks like a good player uh, who might be a big player in the first few weeks of the season as, as some of the late returners get back to fitness um, of course he missed that chance how did he not put in, in the net to make it 2-0 um, you know it was just uh, baffling to me He'd done all the hard work and it was just a case of doing too much trying to you know score the perfect goal when he just needed to hit it first time as, as soon as he chipped it over to then I think when the ball dropped it the the space was there to hit it and it was just baffling but I'd rather him do that now than in the Super Cup or against Palace so I think overall he can be quite impressed with his performance moving on to a player who played the full 90 today um Chalaba Trevor Chalaba in the middle of a back three we didn't really get to see him advanced into central midfield like he did against Bournemouth we saw both um I can't remember who it was in the second half who played in the middle I think uh, sorry in the first half um we saw um wasn't it Lewis Baker wasn't he wasn't involved today and it was quite clear that Tucker was asking that central defender in the back three to push up into midfield. We didn't get to see that as much. And I think that was kind of due to Arsenal's threat, kind of pressing Chelsea back a lot of the time. Um, but I think the overall Chalabar looks so comfortable, composed. He's had a good loan last season in France and he can even play as a DM as well. I think the versatility in, in Trevor's game, I think is going to give him a great chance to stay with the first team squad this season. And I'm going to say similar just to pair it up here with uh, Dujon Sterling, who came on later in the second half, made an amazing tackle tackle in the second half and once again him in the back three alongside Chalabar I think both of these players in particular Dujon Sterling I'd put, maybe put above Chalabar just in terms of uh, realistic chances to stay because of all the rumours this summer about a right-sided player Hakimi, Adama Traore I think that Dujon Sterling because he ha he can play as right wing back but also fill in at right centre back I do 
I would give the edge to Dujon Sterling, but I think both of these players have, um, in the two games I've seen against Bournemouth and, and Arsenal, have really impressed me. I think they've really taken the opportunity and um, I, maybe they could get some more minutes on the tuckle this season if they stay. Um, some more players came on. Malang Saar, of course, Dujon Sterling, Danny Drinkwater, Tammy Abraham, Davide Zappacosta. Then we had Kepa, Bavaraman, Ross Barkley, Michi Batshuayi and N'Golo Kante coming on later in the half. Tammy Abraham obviously scoring against the club he could be signing for. There's been lots of rumours about Tammy to Arsenal. I was on an Arsenal podcast recently speaking about him. Great for Tammy. I think Tammy's all-round game. He should have had probably a hat-trick. You know, there was many chances. Arsenal, once again, horrendous playing out from the back. Gave so many opportunities to Chelsea to finish. And yeah, sure, I know that will probably point to the fact that Chelsea's finishing is still quite poor and why we need a world-class forward. But Tammy proving once again for me in both of these games in terms of his all-round play and movement that if we let him go and we don't get a replacement, I mean, it's squad malpractice. It really is. And, and Tammy, I think, should be appreciated for what he does. Yes, we all want a Haaland. We all would like to see Lukaku come in. Um, but Tammy, I think... I think that's a big moment personally for him even if he still leaves I think just to get that goal just get that confidence um, potentially as I say a club that he could be signing for and apparently want him this summer um, it's typical isn't it I do think the goal we conceded was just a case of I think we made quite a few subs just before that and it was a really poor header to give away I think Drinkwater lost uh, Granite Xhaka um, who could have been off as well from Arsenal this summer typical for him to score um, but that was a little bit frustrating. But overall, I think the energy levels, I think the the sharpness in our play, I think players like Callum hudson Doy, I think is a real standout so far. Um, and I think Hakim Ziyech too. Um, two players who maybe had a question mark over their heads this summer, but I think have really taken the opportunity to be in front of the likes of Timo Werner, Kai Havertz, and of course Mason Mount coming back later to potentially be in that starting eleven in the Super Cup. Um, Andreas Christensen and Dave, I think, are back now. Whether they'll feature... On Wednesday against uh, Tottenham, we'll have to wait and see. Um, and after that, there's no other preseason friendly scheduled. Though they did move this open training session, and there may be another preseason friendly that they could quickly schedule for next weekend, which I think would be good before the Super Cup, just to get another game in. Potentially, those late returners can get some minutes before we play that Super Cup game, because um, I think more friendlies this summer the better for the squad. But I think brilliant to see Kai Havertz scoring. Um, and yeah, we win the game. You know, listen, it's it's, it's a preseason friendly. That's what it is it's a fitness test for some of these players especially the late euro returning players um but i think there are certain players that you could look at there and maybe think and maybe in a few months time we could look back on and say that was a great moment for them to to really get in front of Tuchel and impress him there are some players in that second half who don't have futures at chelsea they they really don't um, i look at the likes of ross barkley i look at davide zappacosta danny drinkwater who despite looking all right against bournemouth some players that are just not going to have a future at chelsea um, and it still is quite puzzling that the likes of Amanda Broja was playing uh, for the under 23s yesterday, scored a good goal against Woking um, and scored against Bournemouth, but wasn't involved today. Um, I would have preferred him to get some more minutes today against Arsenal rather than him playing uh, for the academy yesterday. It just didn't make a lot of sense to me. So maybe some of these players, I'm pretty sure some of these players in the, in the coming weeks will be off uh, from Chelsea and they don't have a lot of uh, time left at the club, which is, is what's needed outgoings as, as important as incomings this summer. Those are my thoughts on the game. I'd say it's a bit of a mess of a preseason friendly. Uh, we're closer and closer to the start of the season now, you know, um, post Tottenham on, on Wednesday, unless there's a quick friendly scheduled uh, for next weekend, it's then the Super Cup, which I know a lot of people care about. And then we're into the opening game of the season at the bridge against Crystal Palace. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea, and I'll see you again.